Welcome to Cowork Radio here on KZSB 1290 AM. I'm Catherine Raymock. And I'm Jim Walker-Wood. And we're a show all about the modern entrepreneur. Each week we interview two company founders, and we will tell you who they will be in just a minute. But first, we want to thank our sponsors, Impact Hub, Santa Barbara, and Montecito Bank and Trust. J.P. James Knapp is here today. J.P. founded Codo Group, which is a property management company based in Santa Barbara, specializing in student and residential housing on the Central Coast. And Joel Heath is also here. He founded a company company in uh, Motion Makers of Fluid Stance, and he also is a familiar face with Decker's, leading Decker's Teva brand. And we're going to talk about his turnaround as the brand president and marketing director there. And in a minute, We'll tell you about next week's guests, and also we'll introduce John Greathouse again here for his weekly segment. But first, we want to start off with some local news, and we'll segue a bit into business news as well. Repopulation of Montecito began yesterday. That's following the Thomas fires and mudslides. Yesterday, Coast Village Road was opened, and the northwest section above the 101 Today, the section south of the 101 to Bonnie Mead was opened, and they're talking about Burnham Wood tomorrow. And I know that last night, uh, Janine's was open, giving out cookies today. Honor Bar open? Yeah, and you know, they, I think a handful of companies uh, or businesses can actually reopen. They still have the mandatory boil water uh, notice, so that, that makes it difficult for a lot of the restaurants, but I think they'll deal with it. I was actually surprised to hear this stat. Well, first of all, there's 500 employees that work along that corridor, wow. and uh, collectively, those businesses are responsible for about $70 million a year in taxable sales, and they certainly have lost a lot. So um, our suggestion is to get back in when you can and make sure that you're helping to support those businesses. We certainly hope that most of them are able to stay in business. On on the boil water, I was talking to the owner of Brioche this morning, and she said they're going to be back there tomorrow, which is Thursday. And I think a great thing to do and what um, me and some of my friends have been doing is pre-buying gift cards for the various locations. So next time you go to somebody how, somebody's house for dinner, instead of bringing that re-gifted candle, you bring them a gift certificate for brioche or one of the other local stores. I think that's a great idea. In fact, uh, somebody was talking about that, even with the businesses in downtown Santa Barbara that have lost so much with the, the fires and people not shopping, is to get something for someone that may be maybe even a housewarming when they move back into a home. I know a lot of those people that are going back in and in um, you know kind of small stages are having to relive this thing again because they're going back and they're seeing the extent of damage. Um, do you know State Farm has actually stepped up and said that they are going to cover Everybody that has State Farm, they're going to cover the flood just based on fire insurance. On, on homeowners. And yeah. I know Hannah Beth Jackson is putting forth uh, a request that all the insurance companies follow suit with that. Yeah, I think I think that's terrific. Um, now, I don't know if you know this, but uh, you probably do, um, that uh, some of the survivors of the mudslides are apparently reluctant to ask for help from FEMA because they're saying that the undocumented immigrants with children born in the U- U.S. are eligible for help, but they also have told them that they're going to share that information with the Department of Homeland Security. So uh, that's the why immigration groups, a cause is one of them, and many others have started something called 805 UndocuFund, and Direct Relief International just gave $100,000 to that. And the money is going to help uh, survivors evacuated from Montecito homes where they worked, and also workers that were impacted by the closure of the 101 that oh. had to get back and Direct forth. Relief's done an amazing job. They were the ones, first ones, I think, giving out those N95 masks. Now, Zotos is still offering free bowling uh, to any victims of the fire and mudslide. So call and make your lane reservation because that's going to end on January 31st. That's at Zotos.com or 805-967-0128. I like that. It's kind of, you know, at least for a little while, do, do something yeah. that, you know, can put a little smile on your face. Um, the LAC, the Local Assistance Center, is still open. And that is going to be open until February the 4th, and it is located at the Calvary Chapel, 1 North Caia Cesar Chavez. I have not gone by. I've talked to people that have, though, and find it uh, very, very helpful. It's staffed with representatives from the Office of Emergency Services, from FEMA, 
U.S. Small Business Administration, and also counselors are on hand. So it's sort of billed as a one-stop shop for people that are looking to um, either maybe have some... They have been very mm-hmm. helpful. And normally I wouldn't recognize or give a shout out to a big corporation, but I have to say Southern California Edison have been amazing the way they've stayed in communication with us. Okay, so you us know when our gas is going to get restarted, and you are you are next. in an evacuation yes. area that I think was just lifted today. And I, I this is the first that you've told me about their being in contact with you. So through texts and what kinds of things are they telling you? They have been sending texts out every day, telling us where has been connected, where is going to be connected, and what the plan is for next week. And they have at the Music Academy the last few days, like 75, 100 employees there. And there's a little station where you can go and ask questions, set up your appointment. The guy came around to my house. He lit everything, checked my dryer. I mean, they were just incredible. Uh, that reminds me that Southern California or so- SoCal Gas also said making sure that people get on and update their accounts because they will come out personally yeah. to all the – yeah. Um, and um, anything else flood-related uh, or did you No, but I did want to mention mm-hmm. something fun-related. This Saturday from 4 to 7, there are puppets in Paseo Nuevo Mall. It's a kickoff party for Puppet Palooza. So bring the whole family. That's an evening of crazy puppet fun with giant bubbles, puppet videos, jugglers, puppet selfies, puppet memorabilia, K-E-Y-T with John Palmateri and his own John Palmateri puppet. I don't know if he's going to operate the puppet. or. Oh, that is hy- <laughs> that's hysterical. <laughs> that's worth it right there. All right, because Poor usually John. we do um, some, yeah, at least uh, if not regional, then, uh, then sort of uh, throughout the states kind of a look at what is going on with technology. And I thought this was very interesting. From Seattle now, but as uh, quick as you could say that, it'll be here in Santa Barbara. If you could walk into a store and pick out anything you want, Want and walk right out, and it's not shoplifting. Well, it's done. What Amazon is oh, the future shopping? Okay. Yeah, they've launched their Amazon Go project, and it's a new store. It's located in Seattle. It lets shoppers take the goods right off the counter and walk out. Uh, the payment is made after you leave. The store tallies up what's in your basket. The whole concept is a little disconcerting to some shoppers that say if they feel like they're <laughs> stealing products. And <laughs> be sure that if you pick it up and then put it back on the shelf. Oh. Apparently, you're not charged oh. for it. Some now, people. I hope I have. I just want one more quick thing because I think this yes. is such a good idea. It's called Co-Work at the Mall. They're setting up offices and an event space in 15,000 square feet in Chicago's Magnificent Mile Mall, and it's basically co-working for retailers. So you have a platform to beta test your product to see if you want to open a full-on retail store. Great idea. Hey, you're listening to Cowork Radio here on KZSB 1290 AM. Catherine Raymock along with Jane Walker-Wood. And after the break, which we'll go to in a second, we'll have UCSB professor, prolific business author John Greathouse to answer your social media questions. If you want to get your questions answered, you can go to our website at coworkradio.com and check it out there. And we also want to thank, once again, Impact Hub and Montecito Bank and Trust. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Catherine Raymock. Are you buying or selling a home? See Compass Realtor Terry Riken. I went to Terry because of his reputation and experience, but was quickly taken by his genuine enthusiasm. It's that combination that truly sets him apart. Terry specializes in properties in Montecito, Hope Ranch, Santa Barbara, and San Inez Valley, and has 39 years of experience as an agent and broker. There are so many realtors to choose from, but only one Terry Riken. Find out for yourself. Google search Terry Riken. Do you have a special event coming up? Go to Zotos for all your party needs. At Zotos, they offer packages for birthday parties, corporate and team building events, accompanied, of course, with a light show, DJ, delicious food, bowling, and full bar. Call 967-0128, where the staff will help you plan and execute an exciting event all within your budget. Go to Zotos.com to book your party now, because when you're having an event, it's got to be Zotos. Koto Group. We are a boutique property management firm located here in the Central Coast. We are small enough to prioritize your business and large enough to match the right tenants with your property. Koto Group. We work for you 24-7 with around-the-clock marketing and emergency service. At Koto Group, we use leading-edge software, making us efficient and cost-effective. 
Koto Group, property management for the 21st century. Hi, I'm Dan Farrick, Managing Director of the Impact Hub Santa Barbara. Come visit us and find out why co-working spaces are booming. Our two locations in the Funk Zone and downtown Santa Barbara offer private offices, permanent desks, and a variety of co-working memberships starting as low as $60 a month. Mention Cowork Radio when you book our tour, and we'll give you 10% off your first six months of membership. Join a community where you can live and work smart. Go to impacthubsb.com or call 284-0078 to find out more. Welcome back to Cowork Radio here on KZSB, 1290 AM, Catherine Raymock, along with Jane Walker-Wood and UCSB professor, business author, and one of our favorite people, John Greathouse, here to answer your social media questions. By the way, just a reminder before we introduce John here, if you want a question answered, you can email askjohn at cwr.com, or you can go to our website at coworkradio.com. Also, you can listen on iTunes, uh, iHeart, and YouTube as well. And John Greathouse is here. I'm doing awesome. How are you? Oh, it is so good to see you. It's uh, it's the best part of our week. <laughs> oh, one of them, anyway. You're very hey, kind. Hey, uh, we've got a question from Amber, mm-hmm. and uh, I think this is fascinating. She says that I'm graduating this year, and I'm wondering if I should get an MBA. I'm not sure if I want to start a business. I've always been entrepreneurial, but a bit of a renegade when it comes to doing what I'm told. I mm, think that I might be that. a lot of the next generation, right? But yep. uh, and it's Amber anyway. Um, what do you think? Well, Amber, the, the typical answer in business, which is why I love business, is it depends. There's almost never just a black and white yes or no. And I think this is this is a case in point to that. I get this question a lot from my students at UCSB, as you would expect. Um, and I have strong feelings about it. So just I'll, I'll tell you my feelings, but keep in mind it's one person's opinion. Go get multiple opinions on this. It does depend. I think if you have a technical degree, if your undergraduate degree is not business-oriented, so maybe you're a scientist or an engineer or someone that really hasn't had much business background, then, yes, it can it can help you tremendously. If you're an entrepreneur and you already feel like you know you're, you're a renegade and you, you want to get out there, I would say it could actually be detrimental to to getting to starting your business. Really? Yes, because and there's a number of reasons for it. I'll, I'll go through a couple of them. Um, it, one is it's just really expensive to get an MBA. You're taking two years out of your work life. Um, the the degree itself is quite expensive. You know, the average loan. I don't know the the, the newest numbers, but I wrote an article about this uh, probably 18 months ago. The the average was over 120000 I believe, in loans that MBA students come out of college with. So think about trying to start a business when you're sitting on top of $100,000 plus in loans. The other thing is you're worth a lot of money typically when you get an MBA. So now you not only are you sitting under a lot of money in a loan, but now your market value is quite high. Uh, and as we know, when you start a business, you don't typically make a lot of money. So your peers are going to be out there making money to pay off their loans, and you're going to be that person out there trying to and the start stress, a company. And the stress. Because you'd have to work a part-time job just to keep up on the interest. Yeah, some of these loans are over 10%. Yeah, they, and they could start they can start stacking up quickly. So I would say don't get your MBA. You don't need your MBA to be an entrepreneur, absolutely. Um, and don't get your MBA if you think it's going to turn you into an entrepreneur because it won't. If you do get an MBA, if anybody else is out there listening and they say, well, I'm not really that entrepreneurial – I would say have your company pay for your MBA. That's the right way to get it. Yeah. Have, do it at night. Go to Pepperdine's got a great um, you know weekend and evening program. There's a, there's a lot of good executive programs out there. I think USC has one. Get your company to pay for it. That way you come out with no debt, and then you have that credential. What do you find, because you hire a lot, um, what do you find is the difference between somebody that has an MBA and not? What are people it, learning in that two years? Yeah. I, I, so an MBA, when it really boils down, it's it's a, it's giving you a tool belt, like just like a carpenter or a plumber has a tool belt. So they're really good about giving you tools. They're less good about telling you when to use them. So if you – I think that's where, where entrepreneurial instincts really come into play. If you if you have all these new cool tools, but you don't really know quite when to deploy them in what situation, then they're just new cool tools. And the other thing about an MBA is it's it's in many of them are are vocational schools for entrepreneur I mean, for consultants and for investment bankers. That's really those are really the two sets of folks that get the most out of it. But an what MBA. about the networking opportunities? A lot of people say that's you're very valid. Meet the people and get connected. It's very valid. So, but but keep in mind that. Um, 